Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and LittleShaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to stop explaining to the narcissist. If you've heard the episode of the show entitled Stop Explaining to the Narcissist, you know that trying to explain yourself to a narcissist is pointless. In many situations, it is the exact wrong thing to do as it offers opportunities for gaslighting, blame shifting, motive assignment, narrative twisting, and hands the narcissist ammunition to use against you, either in this conflict or during a later one. It is a pointless, frustrating exercise that does nothing but damage you and does not reach the narcissist at all. Why do we keep trying to explain? As we explored in the other video, as rational adult people, when there's a misunderstanding or a contradiction, when we believe that someone has gotten us, our intentions, or our motives wrong, we want to correct this misconception. We want the people around us to see us as we see ourselves. When they don't, this can be stressful and even hurtful, depending on what it is. But people entangled with narcissists often have an especially difficult time trying to stop explaining, even when they know it's absolutely useless. This unconscious desire to correct or control the opinions others have of us is often rooted in a need for validation that stems from old wounds. If someone does not agree with me that I am good, lovable, worthy, okay, etc., then I cannot believe that I am good, lovable, worthy, okay, etc. For someone with this kind of conditioning, proving their worth or essential goodness to another person, particularly somebody they care about, becomes disproportionately important in the relationship and in their lives. This is very damaging when someone is in a relationship with a narcissist because narcissists do not give consistent validation or have stable, consistent, or rational opinions. Trying to prove anything to them is pointless, and giving them so much input over your self-worth this way opens you up for a large amount of hurt. So, okay, we know that explaining ourselves to a narcissist is a waste of time and is even harmful in many situations. So what do we do instead? As stated in the aforementioned episode of the show, if you absolutely must respond, it's best to respond with something that doesn't validate the narcissist's assertion, but also which does not feed into the situation. Something like, you're entitled to your opinion. This not only doesn't validate or even mention the narcissist's assertion about you, it relegates it to its proper place, an opinion. That's all it is. It's not a fact. It's not a definition of you that you need to internalize or take personally. It's nothing but the opinion of another person, a person who is not even able to understand or face the truth about themselves and their own behavior. Yes, you probably care about this person, but that doesn't somehow make their opinions or perceptions of you more valid or true. It just means these things could hurt you more if you allow them to do so. Put the things you're being accused of or labeled with where they belong, in the category of someone else's opinion. But now that we know that, how do we actually do it? How do we stop explaining? This is the challenging part. People often become locked in cycles with these kind of relationships. They try to resolve a conflict, the narcissistic person shifts the focus to them, and then it just devolves into the person trying to explain their motives or defend their behavior over and over again to someone who is absolutely not interested in understanding and possibly not even capable of hearing it at this point. Or the conflict begins with the narcissist attacking and accusing. Either way, it's a pointless, fruitless exercise that goes nowhere and accomplishes nothing. The key to unlocking the cycle is to see this behavior for what it really is, a bait and switch. The narcissist may or may not actually believe the things they're saying to or about you, but that's not the point. The point is that now you're talking about you. Whatever issue you were trying to resolve with them, whatever question you asked of them, whatever explanation you were looking for from them is no longer the topic of discussion. You are now upset and emotional, explaining, denying, or defending yourself, and whatever point you originally had is lost in the weeds of whatever left field the narcissist has dragged everybody into. The narcissist has taken the offensive, and you are now automatically on defense, trying to explain to this person that what they are saying about you is not true, not fair, or not the point. The actual point you were trying to make, and the threat that the narcissist perceived in that point, has now gone by the wayside. That is the point of this behavior. What they said to bait you is not important. They could have easily said one of a hundred other things. The fact that you reacted is what matters. This is how narcissists learn what hurts you. You tell them. 
They throw everything they can think of at you and the things that you react to or get upset about will be repeated because they worked. It's as simple as that. This is the extent of their power over you and it's really no power at all. You can choose at any time to stop taking the bait. It isn't easy, but with practice and a clearer perspective, it is entirely possible. Seeing the narcissist behavior for what it really is and attempt to shift what they perceive to be threatening focus onto somebody else and nothing more is part of having that clearer perspective. Another part is exploring your own behavior. What are you really trying to do? Why are you putting so much time and energy into this? What is this really about? In these questions lie the answers that will help you to understand your own motivations so you can break this cycle instead of simply reacting to it or trying to ignore it. For example, if you find that you're trying to prove to the narcissist that you are a good and worthy person, some questions you could use to explore this are, why is this so important to me? Why am I so willing to invest so much into proving this? What am I hoping to get or to achieve by doing this? Who am I really trying to convince? Where did the idea come from that this needs to be proven to or believed by anybody but me in the first place? How can I validate this for myself so that I don't need another person to agree with me in order to believe that it's true? In this way, you can explore what the true motivations are behind your behavior and what you're really trying to accomplish with it. This will help you to come up with healthier ways to meet whatever needs or address whatever wounds are connected to the behavior. You can also explore why you're reacting to certain things the way that you are and what this means for you. In this way, we can not only get control of our reactivity and defeat the bait and switch, but we can also address these things within ourselves so that we're no longer vulnerable to this manipulation tactic. This is essentially how the gray rock method works. You can stop reacting when you understand what they're trying to do and how they're trying to do it. You can stop reacting to their endless provocations when you truly realize that what this person is saying has nothing to do with you at all. And even if it somehow does, it's the opinion of a person who lives in a fantasy world, literally. The truth is, the opinions other people have of you, even people you love, don't really matter when you know who and what you truly are. They don't define you when you can define and validate yourself. Understanding that is how you stop explaining to the narcissist. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype for international clients. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I offer seminars, workshops, clinics, and more throughout the year, and some are monthly. So if you're interested in seeing what we're running right now, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by betterhelp.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.